Good morning. Today we're going to talk about precision and concision. I know I talked about it a little bit in a previous video, but I want to go into further detail about it because you have your precision and concision homework due this week. Now, I mentioned before, technical writing is the tension between precision and concision. First of all, precision comes first. You never sacrifice precision for the sake of concision. Okay, precision comes first. What you want to do is make your words have one meaning, make your writing have one meaning, only one meaning. And you want to do that in as few words as possible. That doesn't mean you cut out all the words that make it precise. Sometimes making something precise means it's going to take more words. It's going to take longer. And that's okay. You want to be precise. That's the goal. And you want to do that in as few words as possible. So on your homework sheet, you're going to see a lot of places where there are there's vague language. So you want to pay attention to those words that appear to be vague. Whenever there is a word like very, for example, very is vague. When, in fact, some people would say it has no meaning. It's either slang, as in bad, very bad. It's slang. It means some degree worse than the already vague thing, bad. If I were to use that in a technical document, I would end up saying the, the outcome is very bad. The outcome was very bad. What does that mean? It's so vague. Instead, be precise. The outcome means that the, in, the system will require three months more of testing. Okay? That's something the client want, would want to know. They wouldn't want to know it's very bad or even that it's bad, that's all vague. So even in that uh, concision and precision, the first one says the mechanism will require a substantial amount of redesign. Really, how much redesign? A substantial amount. What does that mean? Like what degree is that? Does that mean 100%? Does that mean 90%? Are we talking 50%? Or would 25% be substantial? Because I would say, yeah, if you've got to redesign a quarter of the system, that's substantial. Redesigning 90% of the system, that's substantial. Where in that range is it? We don't know. The, the language that it's substantial is vague. And so I want you to rewrite. Anytime you see those words like substantial, very, rewrite that. Make it precise. It doesn't mean you have to write a ton. Just give a percentage your percentage, or which part has to be redesigned. Try to be as precise as possible. Feel free to make it up. I had one student make the whole thing about Back to the Future. Great. No problem. Make it up. Uh, you don't know the context for these sentences. You're free to make it up as you will. Uh, so you want to pay attention to the times when the language is imprecise. Also pay attention to the time when the times in the language is wordy, when it's not helping it be more precise. So you will need to add in words. You may need to cut out words. Sometimes in the same sentence, you're going to add in for part that's imprecise, and you're going to cut out for parts that are not concise. So precision and concision. As an example of this, I want to show you a slide. This is a copy of a PowerPoint slide that was used by Boeing in their analysis of the Space Shuttle Columbia. So if you Google, just try Googling if you want to look on your computer right now, try Googling NASA Columbia PowerPoint slide or Columbia disaster PowerPoint slide. And it's this slide that is called Review of test data indicates conservatism for tile penetration. That's the headline at the top. And I want to spend a little bit of time going through this because this slide gets at the a, a, a few things. One is about the dangers of PowerPoint, but it's also about the dangers of imprecision. 
Okay, so let me explain to you about the Spatial Columbia first. The, a piece of the spray-on foam insulation came off, and they knew this at liftoff. They saw the video, they saw the piece come off, and it hit the wing, but they didn't know how much damage it did to the wing. They couldn't tell. So, and they wanted to know, do we need to go up and rescue the astronauts? Should we have them do a repair um, while on the while on the space shuttle in orbit? What did they need to do? They didn't know because they didn't know how much damage it did. So they hired Boeing to do analysis to try to figure out what they should do. They needed a conclusion. Okay, what do we do with these astronauts? Are they just going to die? Um, is it safe to bring them home on the Space Shuttle Columbia? So Boeing did this analysis, and here's an example of one of their PowerPoint slides. I'm going to show you. The headline, the conclusion is, review of test data indicates conservatism for tile penetration. What that means is that after reviewing the available data, the test data for how much damage a piece of spray-on foam insulation does when it strikes, the review of data means that the amount of penetration is probably not that much. The estimate should be pretty conservative. Okay, that means not, it may be less than you think. Okay, so that's their headline. The amount of penetration is probably not that much. That's their conclusion. The rest of it flows from that. The existing spray-on foam insulation on tile, so the spray-on foam insulation, the piece that breaks off, the test data that was used to create Crater, which is a software system that tries to describe how much damage is done, was reviewed along with this other data where they actually shot pieces of the foam at uh, pieces of the shuttle to see how much damage it did. So they reviewed all the available data, both the test data used to create this system and this other data. Crater, that system, over-predicted penetration of tile coating. It over-predicted it. It means that we know how much damage the spray-on foam insulation actually did. When we put it into the system to how much it said it would do, it said it did more. So it over-predicted it. But how much did it over-predict it? Significantly. That's the vague language. Significantly could be 2%. It could be 99%. We don't know. We don't know how much it over-predicted it. Was it a range? Was it always 25%? Was, was it between 25 and 45%? How much damage did it actually do? How much did Crater say it would do? And what was the difference there? We don't know. It only says that the difference is significant. The rest of it should go on to explain that because we've got bullet that's under that one. Now, here's the explanation of that overprediction. The initial penetration to be described by normal velocity, so the amount of the initial penetration at normal velocity varies with the volume and mass of the projectile. Of course it does. The amount of damage done by a projectile depends on the volume or mass of the projectile, always. Now, there's some problems here because this is a recreation of a slide. The, the original did not have those typos, let's say. So, the initial penetration varies with volume, mass, and projectile. Of course it does, it always does. Significant energy is required for the softer spray-on foam insulation particle to penetrate the relatively hard tile coating. How much energy is required? Significant. We don't know again, just a lot. 
you might as well say a lot, a lot of energy is required to penetrate the tile coating. But test results do show that it is possible at sufficient mass and velocity, because they already said it varies with the mass of the projectile. So at sufficient velocity, sufficient mass, it can penetrate the hard tile coating. What velocity, what mass, we don't know enough, but it can happen. How much energy is required? Significant, vague. Conversely, once the tile is penetrated, okay, so once it gets through that initial surface, that initial tile, it, the spray-on foam insulation can cause significant damage. How much damage? A lot. Minor variations in total energy above the penetration level. So once it penetrates, if it's still got more energy, it can cause significant tile damage. How much? Don't know. Significant. So all of these bullets are there that they reviewed the data. What does the data tell them? Crater over predicts it. The rest of it seems to be about crater. The bullets don't actually make sense here. Those should not be under that one. Then we get another one here. So this, this bullet aligns with that bullet. The flight condition, the actual flight condition of the Space Shuttle Columbia, the, when we looked at the, the video, I'm sorry, I'm speaking as someone doing this analysis. When we looked at the video, the flight condition is significantly outside of test database. So the condition, the piece of the spray and foam insulation that came off is not the same as what we have in our, our databases. The volume of ramp or the piece that broke off, the actual piece is 1920 cubic inches. But in our tests, what we have is three cubic inches. So all of this stuff that they just told us really doesn't matter because the difference here is huge. We should be conservative in how much, uh, how much damage was done? Not really because our test information is so far outside of the actual piece that broke off that the, the review, the test really can't be used. They can't be used. What they really should say is, we don't know how much damage was done. Based on the test, we cannot tell how much damage was done. Or maybe they need to do the amount, maybe they should tell us, you know, the difference here, because all they say is it's significantly outside the test database. But that difference is so big that it should make us question every other time it uses the word significant. And it uses it one, two, three, four, five times, five times. Don't use language like significant, okay? It should be, you should always try to give the actual data or the range. Be precise. And if your headline is that it's outside the test da database, that the test results don't conform to the actual, then put that as your headline if that's actually your conclusion. Put the conclusion, the actual conclusion. So, precision, always be precise. Make your language have one meaning. Explain it to the reader. And do that in as few words as possible. Good luck.